accounting equation and Excel. Record deposit for the owner investing money into the business and for the business taking out a loan. Get ready and some coffee because we're getting into the accounting foundation, the accounting equation using Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product. Because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty, to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there or you could just construct your own worksheet as we go from here or possibly just follow along with good old paper and pencil. If you do have access to this workbook though, three tabs down below. Example, practice, blank, example, in essence, the answer key, the practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working on is where we started with a blank worksheet but are basically working within a template. However, updating that template as needed as we go through the practice problem. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be building this time. We started out by entering our beginning balance that we're recording into our accounting system, which we're constructing basically using the accounting equation. And now we're gonna go into the first month of actual data, which is gonna impact not only the balance sheet, but also the income statement once we move forward, the income statement being that timing statement. Now our focus this time is gonna be on those types of transactions that are often used when we first start the business. Now notice that this business has already been started. We pulled in the beginning balances, but we're imagining here that it's still kind of a startup type of business and we need to generate capital in order to invest so that we can uh, then use that investment in assets to help us to generate revenue. These are the types of things that typically happen at the beginning of the business because you need the capital to buy the things that are going to help you to generate the revenue, such as property, plant, and equipment, and possibly inventory, depending on the type of industry that we are in, could also happen when, of course, we're trying to scale up. We're trying to grow the business. Therefore, maybe we're buying a new place, a new building, new equipment to scale up the business. We might need investments. Now, in other words, if we're going to be buying stuff that's going to help us generate revenue if we're a landscaper we need a truck or something like that right we need the we need the equipment that we're going to be using to help us to generate uh, the revenue where do we get that initial investment we can't get it from the customers unless they're going to pay us in advance for the work that we're going to do for them in the future which is going to be a difficult proposition to sell therefore we're going to have to get it in some other way either we put the money in ourselves, which means that we're going to have to have the money as the owner if we're a sole proprietorship taking it out of our personal account into the business account. Or uh, if we have multiple owners, if we're a partnership and we have like five people involved, possibly some of them being silent partners, they're them investing the capital while we're doing more of the work, which is kind of structures that you could set up in a partnership type of situation a little bit uh, more easily than possibly even a corporation in some ways, although we'll, we won't get into that. You could have a limited liability company and so on like that, but that's gonna be uh, the idea there. Or we could uh, get a loan from the bank. 
Now, obviously, there's pros and cons to either of these methods. If we invest the money ourselves, then of course, we're, we're strapping our own cash that we're investing and putting at risk in the business. If we had the cash and we're confident about the business, that would be great if we could do that. But oftentimes we don't have the cash. We could then take on partners. The problem with taking on partners, however, is now they have an interest in the business and they're gonna tell you what to do. So now you have to, you have to get a committee together and if you don't agree on the on the aims of the business that could be a problem so in order to not take on partners to get the capital investment you might take a loan but the problem with a loan is you might not be able to get the loan it's difficult to get if it's a startup business and even if you can't get the loan then of course you have to pay back the loan not only the loan but also the interest on the loan all right so let's look at this from just an accounting standpoint, remembering that normally the deposits that go into the business are gonna ultimately come from customers, hopefully. So in other words, once the business has started, we expect the cash that's coming into the business to be coming from customers. And if we have a bank feed system set up in something like an accounting software, like a QuickBooks or a Zero, then we might have some system that we assume that all deposits are gonna be revenue. And if we make an assumption like that, we need to be very careful that we don't pick up those deposits which aren't revenue as revenue, because if we do that, then it's gonna overstate our revenue. And if we're in the United States, we'll be paying taxes on overstated revenue from an income tax perspective. So what we wanna make sure to do is say, the, the rare times, the, the unusual events when we have a deposit, usually in the startup of the business or in the growth of the business, is when we got to make sure that we properly record these deposits into either the capital account if they're owner investments or into a liability if they're loans. All right, from a journal entry, let's go back to the, to the blank tab. It's a fairly straightforward situation. Now we're gonna do a little bit more formatting here as we go. We're gonna need some more rows down below. So I'm gonna select these items here and go to the format painter. And I'm just gonna paint brush this down so we have some more uh, columns. I'll just go you know, a ways down. And then here I'm gonna copy this down so this these pluses and the equals come into play. So I'll just go across and I'll use my fill handle and drag that on down. Do -do 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 that should be good. All right, and then let's do it for this one as well. I'm just going to take this whole bit and I could just take this whole bit and then oh, no, I messed it up. And take this whole thing. Maybe I can just copy it and then I'll take it down down to here and paste it control v so we have some more space some more formatted cells to be working with and i'm going to unhide i've hid some cells between these two last time so i'm going to unhide those i'm going to put my cursor on af to bw if you're working in the worksheet it's probably unhidden already but i'm going to right click and unhide that stuff and then i'll do the same thing for the sub ledger i'm going to copy that sub ledger info or the just the cells so that we have it set up easy to work with moving forward adjusting the, the worksheet as needed as we go practicing our excel formatting as we work through this thing all right so now let's say on one one because we're going to say at the beginning of the month again this isn't part of the beginning balance this is us doing an investment so we're starting our bookkeeping no impact on the income statement yet because it's an owner investment so owner invest cash to business so we're going to say the owner puts in another sixty-five thousand. why because they want to buy furniture and equipment let's say and we instead of the owner buying the furniture and equipment right and then putting that into the business which would be kind of a mess because then then we'd have to put a journal entry of the equipment going on the books without the cash being impacted what we typically want to do is put the cash from the owner's account into the business account and then pay for the equipment from the business account so that we can see the audit trail within the business account. Now I'm gonna go up to the top and I'm gonna freeze the panes so that we see the top bit. So I'm gonna put my cursor, I'm scrolled all the way up. I'm putting my cursor on A4 and go into the view tab and panes and let's freeze the pane. 
Freeze the pain because it hurts. Put some ice on it, man. Put some ice on it. All right. So now we're going to go. The cash is going to go up. So 65000 And we're going to say the other side is going to be in equity. The owner's equity. Now, notice that in equity, we, we have a decision here in terms of how we want to be breaking out our equity. What we want to make sure that we don't do, and again, this is important if you have bank feeds on your like your accounting system, is to not put it in sales, even though that's part of equity because it'll roll into the equity here. But it's not revenue. We don't want it on the income statement. It should be off income statement. If it's a sole proprietorship, then I could put it into the owner's equity account, which also represents the money that's going to or the revenue that's going to accumulate in the business and roll into that account close into it like similar to retained earnings for a corporation and oftentimes that's what people do because again the investments are not as common but when we do that we have to be careful that when we do our reconciliation of retained earnings that that the retained earnings is going to include which is our owner's equity account not only the prior balance, but also the investments. And then we usually break out draws, meaning draws are the money that we take out of the business, going from the business to our personal account, which we hope to be the normal process of our business going forward. In other words, if I'm a sole proprietorship, what I want to be happening is not money going from my personal account into the business, but the other way around, we generate revenue from the business, getting cash flow, taking the money out of the business, putting it into the personal account in the form of draws, if a sole proprietorship, so that we can pay for our personal needs. Now, if it's a partnership, it's gonna be a similar situation, but you're gonna have capital accounts for each partner tracking the equity by capital account, if there's five partners, five different capital accounts in a similar way as having a sub ledger to like the liability account of accounts payable, tracking who you owe the money to because the business is separate from the owner. If it's a corporation, what happens there? Well, when the owners put money into the business of a corporation, that's the issuance of the stock. That So when they issue the stock, that's when the owners are paying the business for their ownership interest represented in these equal units of stock which represent equal units of of share ownership okay but we could also make another account here and break out not just the draws but also break out the investment i'm going to do that to make it a little bit uh more clear on what's happening and that'll make it more clear in terms of what the owner invested what were the draws and then what were the earnings that the company made that then got pulled over into the equity which is equivalent to retained earnings so let's put our cursor up top i'm going to select the whole x column right click on it and insert and then i'm going to go up top here and call this uh, owner investment so it's an owner investment we're not investing in stocks and bonds the owner and in, is investing money into the company uh, is is the type of investment that we're talking about here. So let's make that a little larger. So, and what's the investment look like? Well, they're buying assets. They're buying property, plants, and equipment. So they're investing money into the business. So the business has the money to then buy the assets needed to help us generate revenue. It's an investment because it's used to help us generate revenue from the, the business. So 65,000 goes into there. That's the other side of it. Let's put the zeros across the board zeros across the board do, 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 do. and so there we have it do, do. nothing's happening to the income statement important to note let's put some underlines underneath this thing underline and then we'll underline and then we'll underline and then i'm going to put the balance well let's copy the this amount down to bring down the transaction 65,000 increase to the assets nothing happened to the liabilities does this make us go back in balance red turns green it does so assets go up and equity goes up new balance is going to be the sum cash was at 25,000 plus another 65,000 we now have 90,000 
that we can use to buy new property, plant, and equipment. So I'm going to paste that across the board, just the formulas only, so that we pull down all of our numbers, just the formulas only, pasting down just the formulas only. All right, so there we have it. Okay, let's go back on over and copy this down one more time to make sure our balance is in balance. So 180,896. 38,000 on the liabilities and equities at 142,896. I'm going to put an underline under these. All right, what's the other way that we can get capital in the business? Uh, it, we could get capital, of course, from generating revenue, but if we need the money now so that we can increase the size of our, our equipment to generate more revenue, then we could take a loan out, right? That's the other way we can do this. So again, the loan would mean that that re remember a lot of times you don't have the money for the for the for the equipment. You don't have sixty five thousand. That's why you're trying to do a business so you can generate revenue, All right? But so you might have to take so you might take on partners, or you could you could uh, take out a loan. And again, there's pros and cons because the partnership. Again, you have to be careful on who who's going to be your partner because now they have an interest in the business and have an equity interest and you'll have to share the equity interest and you'll also have to have some input on how you run the business, which a lot of times it's hard to find somebody who isn't, you know, <laughs> who has the same vision for the business. So make sure you write down and you wanna have a partnership agreement if you're going to do that because even if they're your brother or your cousins or whatever, uh, it's that makes it even more important that you write down the agreement <laughs> so so that you so that you know what each person expects you want to be as transparent as possible that's my opinion that's my two cents having worked with many partnerships uh doing bookkeeping and taxes and whatnot make it make sure everybody knows what page everyone's on but anyway so we're gonna go into the other side, it's gonna go into loan payable. We're gonna assume that some of it will be a lo long-term loan payable, but I'm gonna put it into the same loan payable account now, and we'll break out the short-term and long-term loan payable later. Now remember that a loan could go on the books multiple different ways, right? Because you might just get the money from a loan, a business loan, and then decide where to put that money buying various amounts of equipment from the loan that you got from the bank. You could go to buy the equipment say you need a truck for your landscaping business then you might be taking out the loan at the point in time you buy the truck which you're using specifically for business which means that you're that you would take on the loan as you purchase like the equipment uh, but once the loans so putting the loan on the books is usually a fairly straightforward thing although i do want to just point out that uh, in practice, you probably, I would recommend having a separate loan account on your trial balance for each loan that you take out. Some businesses having more loan accounts than others, such as contractors or construction working businesses often do because they might have a lot of equipment that they're financing. So I would have a different one loan account per, uh, Per, per loan so I can tie into the amortization schedule, not breaking out short-term and long-term portion, but only doing that periodically for reporting purposes at the end of the month, quarter, and or year as uh, needed. Also note the loan causes a problem because it's gonna charge us interest that we're gonna have to pay, which means that it's gonna cause us an issue for our automatic payment process that we would like to do with bank feeds because the breakout of interest and principal will not be the same for each payment. So we'll, we'll, there's multiple ways we can deal with that problem, but we'll get to that later. So that's just a, a precursor for you, a little look into the future of some of the issues that will happen. I'm putting my zeros across the board. So, so obviously you're gonna wanna stay tuned uh, for that because that'll be an interesting conversation. Let's put some underline under here, underline. Let's put an underline under here, underline. Underline under here, underline. We'll copy down to see if we're in balance for that particular transaction. Cash goes up by another 50,000. 
50,000 liabilities go up. Nothing happened to equity this, si this time. We're going to say the new balance. New balance, if we sum it up over here, equals the sum. We were at cash of 90,000. We picked up another 50,000 from the loan that we took out. Copying that. Going to paste it across the board. Pasting it formulas only. Pasting it formulas only. Pasting it formulas only. And then we're going to copy down the balance to make sure that our ending balance is still in balance. We're currently at the 230896 We've got a lot of money now for investing. Uh, 88000 liabilities that we owe and 142896 then of the equity. Now, just a quick reminder that if we were to look at the value of the business from a book value standpoint, it's assets minus liabilities. So the 230896 minus the 88000 would be 142896 the equity of the business. But remember, you can't just get, it's not like you could just snap your fingers and like, oh, I'm gonna stop my business and just walk away with my $142,896 because you don't have that much money. In this case, you do have a lot of cash because we just put all the money in the business. But all, what we're gonna do with that money is spend it in order to buy equipment. And so we don't have the money. We So in other words, we could have a large amount of, of equity, but have cash flow problems. We don't have any cash, even though our net assets our equity is high and if we were and you could see that if we liquidated the company so what would we have to do to liquid to get that 142,000? well we could try to sell the business but then i'd have to find a buyer that's willing to pay the book value of 142,896, which they might not do unless i have a good reputation in the business and they want to buy it not just possibly for the equipment and so on but maybe for the goodwill that has been put in place as well, the value of the reputation of the business, in other words. Or I can try to sell everything and, and liquidate the business, which means I'd have to collect on the accounts receivable, 20,500, get those deadbeats to pay me. We'd have to sell the equipment to get the net amount that's currently in place of the 76,500, which might be difficult because it's hard to sell used equipment like a used truck, you know, it's, it takes a little bit of work. And then I would have a total assets in cash in the checking account of 288,96, uh, but then I'd have to pay off the liabilities. I owe accounts payable of 15,000, the visa 1,000, the loan 72,000. Once I pay all of that off, then I would have the 142,000 in equity, which is represented over here by the net of these two items. And then I could uh, close out the business, giving that to myself. That's how we would liquidate it. Now, I just want to point out one other thing over here on the equity side. Remember that the income statement is breaking out the timing of the equity. So it will roll into the equity account periodically. Software will do that like a QuickBooks yearly. Uh, so that means it's going to roll into what would be the retained earnings account if it was a corporation for us, that being the owner's equity account. Now, from a normal bookkeeping standpoint, we would also close out uh, the draws account and investments accounts to the owner's equity so that we can see the draws and investments, not for the whole life of the business, but rather for a, a period, what, whatever that period is, right? So, this, but uh, the software doesn't do that automatically. So a lot of times, you kind of have a choice like in practice as to whether or not you want to close out the draws and the investments or just leave it there not closed out and if you don't close it out what you're going to be looking at on the draws because these are permanent accounts on the balance sheet unless you close them out manually you're going to see draws for the life of the business rather than for one period of the business rather than for the current year you're going to see owner investments for the life of the business rather than one period of the business like one year and then the owner's equity account will represent kind of similar to retained earnings meaning it will represent the revenue of the business that has been generated not only for one year but for the life of the business that is going to be here right all the revenue will be here and then the revenue that has been taken out of the business in order to go to the owners 
will be represented in the contra account over here of draws, right? But what we should be doing is close out. So that's just the idea. So just from a from a normal software standpoint, just note that you don't really have to do the closing process for the income statement because it closes out to equity. But if but you would have to do the closing process for draws and investments if you want to do that on a yearly basis. If you don't, might not be the end of the world. You just want to know what these two accounts represent. Remembering that for tax purposes, often, especially small businesses, are really concerned mainly with the income statement because we have an income tax in the United States. Therefore, you have to, for sure, report some type of income statement <laughs> so that you're gonna to have to determine uh, what the tax will be on, in essence, the net income for the income tax purposes. All right, I think that's basically it. Let's do a quick uh, spell check, check in the spelling and ignore that one, ignore that. All right, looks Mui B to the N.